So this video is going to cover the connections that we can make to history with art, other than the obvious art history connections, and I'll talk about that at the end. Um, I have some wonderful resources that may be helpful um, on the elementary level for that. But there is the um, altered book um, that we've done as different kinds of projects in the art room. So one way that I've done this is partner with my um, history teachers if they're ha handling the Revolutionary War. I have students uh, work with the teacher and identify five key events. So we do five sections in the altered book. Um, some at, towards the end of their semester can kind of pick the historical period that they felt was the most interesting and then create their own altered book based on that. So it isn't necessarily everyone doing the revolution. Maybe they would pick their own one as a way to kind of create a final exam or a final product um, with the help of the art teacher. So that can be kind of fun. Uh, here I have a monument that a student made for an uncle who had passed away, but monuments is another way that we can incorporate history. So looking at major events and things um, students can research about, do some writing about, and then create um, some sketches. What are symbols that can represent that particular event? And then creating a memorial for that event uh, can make a real deep and lasting impression on our students. Um, this one is where I have my students working with um, candles and sticks. Sounds a little frightening, but I've never had an accident in the uh, 30 years that I've been teaching art. So obviously it needs to be in a well-ventilated area. We have water buckets all over the place, so if a stick gets a little too flamey, they can just drop it into the bucket. But we have aluminum foil over a plate, uh, and that, uh, the candle's in the middle of that, so the stick can be placed on the aluminum foil. So we burn that, we learn about Paleolithic drawings, and we do the drawings with uh, charcoal that we're essentially making ourselves with these sticks. Students really do care and they are careful when they're told about the parameters of what is expected in this. Um, but if you're not comfortable with working with an open flame or you're just not allowed to, obviously charcoal is another option. Sometimes I have my students talk, look at the idea of the uh, caves and how a lot of that is based on hunting. That's what the, uh, the people had to do in order to live. So what is it that we do in order to live? So they create their own uh, sort of cave drawings uh, with charcoal kind of showing what it is that they do in their daily lives to make a personal connection. So historical cartoons can be another thing. Um, as we look at different events to come up with a political cartoon can be an interesting way to explore a concept. Here's another one where we take a quote from a famous person in history um, and create an artwork that incorporates the quote into it. So we have uh, Emilio Zapata here and one of his quotes written around his figure. So that can be kind of fun. And then I have my students do some writing on the back of their artwork or on a separate paper, which is displayed with it. So we can show off our literacy skills as well. Here we have a little museum in a box. So we can take a particular event, break it down into its uh, component uh, events, and then create a walkthrough history museum. Um, so again, we have some write-ups and little numbers uh, inside the museum, and then the look at the corresponding number on their write-up so that we can understand what it is it that they're kind of representing there. So that can be kind of fun. Here is another quote from history, and it is illustrated with um, a picture that sort of represents what is it talking about. You could certainly do the I have a dream speech or any other famous uh, line or quote or speech. Taking a part of that and then creating an illustration can be a powerful image. Having puppets can be a fun way to kind of explore historical figures. They could make a puppet and then talk as that historical figure, maybe teaching others about what that person is important for. So if you can put historical figures into a hat and have students pick their own, then they can research, learn some facts, and then use their puppet to teach others about their uh, famous history fact. This is uh, unfolding. So this is an interesting way to kind of play around with uh, kind of like comic books and we'll talk about that later, but unfolding an image, so it's a nine-part story, so you can take a historical event, the beginning, the middle panels, and then the end, and as students unfold it, we get to see the story sort of emerge. So here's a little mini video of it working. Here, in my example, it's just, you know, a little girl that's going out for a swim and then meets a dolphin and a squid. Um, but you can obviously break down a story into nine parts and then illustrate it. And as it's unfolded, it reveals the uh, story or historical event. 
This one, we have a uh, playing card for a, base, a baseball player, but you can put historical figures into a hat, have students choose, research, and then create a trading card based on that historical figure or a historical event. Comic book covers can be another fun way to exp explore history. So uh, here I have sort of a sample where we have logo, title, subtitle, and main action. So we can take an event, um, maybe the Gettysburg Address, that can be the title, subtitle can be America has changed forever, logo, the student can come up with a logo representing themselves as a company, and then some sort of image on there of the particular event. Again, I would incorporate some writing with this, either on the back or on the side that can be displayed uh, with their artwork. This one I do as an interview project with uh, interview with a dead artist, so we play around with the idea of zombies, but certainly you can do an interview with a historical figure. So instead of getting an awful lot of plagiarized papers, by doing this and assuming the person is dead but risen from the dead as a zombie, uh, we can have some interesting first person uh, interviews as research papers and I find they're a lot more fun and students kind of have a little fun with the concept you know how did the person die and how were they revived and that kind of thing um, any th way that you can kind of hook their interest is obviously a, a great way to kind of uh, get them to learn a little bit deeper so they could do interview with Abe Lincoln you know as a zombie he's come back to life he's working at McDonald's so let's go interview him uh, or any other major historical figure um, so that can be a lot of fun. Here in a lenticular, um, that's where we have two images on one piece of paper. So by accordion folding the image and then putting one image on the right-hand sides, another image on the left-hand sides, we can have a two-part thing. So any kind of an event, a before and after, is a great way to kind of illustrate through a lenticular. As it's displayed in the hallway, people walk by, they see one image one way, and then they look back and they see another image. So. A before and after is kind of a fun kind of concept to look at. So uh, Japan before, um, you know, the Western uh, countries uh, came to Japan and then another one after could be kind of interesting from a historical standpoint. Um, and then we could go, you know, before uh, the, um, uh, the revolution and then after the revolution, before the Civil War, after the Civil War. Um, you can have students partner. Each one can do a drawing. It can be cut up and turned into a lenticular so we can have two student images represented in one work of art. Here we go with that comic strip idea. You can have a main cartoon character lead us through a story from history and teach the students about that particular event. So um, breaking it up into you know eight or ten panels can be a great way to kind of uh, break down the story and um, students love cartooning and it's a great way to kind of connect with them. Obviously with uh, art there's uh, a lot of connections to art history and I have some books that have been very helpful. We have had some schools uh, purchase class sets so each student can focus on a different artist from history but I have If Picasso Went to the Zoo where we focus on uh, artists in history and animals. If Picasso Went to the Sea is different artists from history and sea creatures and then if Picasso went on vacation. So this is um, landmarks from all over the world uh, drawn in the style of different artists. So it's not all Picasso, but for example, um, we have a Hieronymus Bosch barn owl. The poem teaches about Hieronymus, Hieronymus Bosch and the barn owl. Um, there we have lit alliteration, the poems are rhyming, they're in the cadence of Twas the Night Before Christmas. So I use that in here because it's kind of fun to read. And then underneath the um, pictures, there's going to be a leaf for the animals that represent if they're thriving, threatened, endangered, or extinct. So that can be kind of fun. I made sure to balance all these books with both male and female artists of um, different national origins. So um, we're not all stuck with uh, dead white guys. So for example, we have Iris Nepinyo and one of her um, jars with a newt on it. So Nepinyo newt. And we can see that some are extinct and some are thriving. And the poem, again, will teach about um, the Native American artist and then also about the newt. So these are fun kind of connections. The sea book does the same thing, but instead of um, leaves, uh, we're going to have seashells. So we've got a Brancusi Barracuda. And then in the vacation book, it's a little bit different. Um, we can have like a Rene Magritte uh, doing Stonehenge. So we've got the birds kind of creating the pattern up in the sky. We get to see where is Stonehenge 
And then um, the poem is teaching about the location, uh, but also about Rene Magritte. And then the last three lines of each poem teach students how to say yes, no, and hello in the indigenous language. Um, so we have one for um, Antony Gaudi, um, and we got a coral reef for him. So we can see where the Australian coral reef is. The poem teaches about Gaudi and also about Australia. So these are great ways to kind of incorporate art history. Again, you can get all three books for a class set um, at firehousepublications.com, or you can get full class sets. We can get you 30 books of each one, so each student can sort of focus on a different artist if you want to make sure that you have diverse results. We can make that available to you at a much lower price than what Amazon has out there, because I wrote the book, so uh, we can get those to you. So if you've liked what you've seen here, I'd like you to go ahead and like and subscribe, maybe share it with a few friends, and check out some of my other videos in this playlist so you can make other core connections to art. Thank you.